Hi, hello, welcome to Brighter Bible Courses. This is lesson number five, the new birth. If you want to come with me to in your Bible to John 3, we're going to read verses 1 through 7. And these verses are really going to set us up for what we want to talk about in this lesson. Um, and it says, Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. So here it is, the concept of being born again, the new birth. Um, and in this passage, a religious man approaches Jesus and tells him that in order to enter the kingdom of God, it is necessary to be born again. And what does it mean to be born again? What, what is this concept that we hear over and over again at church and in Christian circles, born again? Well, Jesus explains to him that this new birth is not a physical birth, but a spiritual birth. And it consists pretty much in believing and declaring faith in Jesus Christ. Now, we must remember that every person is spiritually dead before the eyes of God. From the beginning, when we had the decision, we had the opportunity to make a choice whether to obey God or to do our own will, we decided to do our own will and we fell into sin and that created that sinful nature since Adam to us. And Everybody is, is, is dead. Is, is before the eyes of God, we're separated for, for, from God forever, both in this life and eternity, right? And so in order for that person to have eternal life, where in order for us to have eternal life, we must be born again. This takes away the factor of how good we are, how religious we are, uh, how important we think we are. We all need to come to Jesus, believe in him, declare that faith in him, ask him to be our Lord and Savior, to be born again. That brings us back to God. That reconciles us to God. So everyone who repent, repents and believes in Jesus Christ and receives him in his heart is born again. And it's, remember, it's a, a birth, a spiritual birth, and, and that makes us become a children of God, a child of God, with all the benefits, with all the rights and responsibilities that that implies. Um, so that spiritual birth is the second birth or the new birth or to be born again, all these different ways of saying it. And this new birth is to remove the person's old, dead and corrupt nature of sin and replace it with a with God's nature with a spiritual nature and the Bible says that everyone who is born again is a new man so according to the Bible there is an inner man and an outer man in each one of us so this is what we mean that it, uh, when we say that it's a spiritual uh, birth it's, it's a spiritual new man the outer man is the body and the mind of man everything we are like our thoughts and our, and our emotions and our feelings that is the outer man and the inner man is our spiritual man is our spirit so the new birth is the radical spiritual transformation of man that are, of our inner man that is why when we come to the to to jesus when we become children of god we are born again we still see the same reflection in the mirror because the outer man does not undergo immediate changes the physical body doesn't change. We're going. We're stuck with this body for 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 the rest of our lives and until Jesus comes, and then we will go a physical transformation. The Bible says that we'll be, we will be given a new body and a new incorruptible body. So that's really 
something we can look forward to. Um, but it also says that our minds will be transformed and that will happen in this lifetime. That is a process that will happen uh, or will start when we uh, are born again and our spiritual self is renewed, then uh, our external man or, or our out, out, outer man, oh sorry, this is like really hard for me to pronounce, our, our outer man will be changed then or we can achieve this. Uh, it says that our mind must be transformed and renewed to change from that old carnal sinful way of thinking to uh, a spiritual mind or a, a, a mind like God's uh, like God's mind uh, but that can only be achieved when we have this uh, new birth when we are transformed inside so let's go back talking about this new spiritual man why why is so important what is so special about this new man well this new man is different from the previous one. It is a totally new creation. And there's three things that, or three main things that have changed. First of all, this new man has eternal life. The old man was dead in sin, was slave to sin. And Ephesians 2 1 says, And you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. So in him and through him, we receive eternal life. So now this new man has eternal life. Before we were going to spend eternity separated from God. We were going to spend the rest of our of our earthly life separated from God. But now we can live uh, with, with the Lord in, in God's kingdom. But also look forward to eternity with God. Eternal life. The second thing is that we are completely new in everything. All things have been left behind. All the dead all the corruption, all the sin has been left behind. And Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says it very clearly. It says, therefore, if anybody is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I've learned um, to understand that when the Bible says all, it means all. It's not excluding anything. And number three, this new person, this new spiritual man can live differently. Ephesians 4.24 says, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be God, to be like God, in true righteousness and holiness. So, um, this new man has eternal life. This new man has uh, is new in everything, and this new man can live differently. It is very important for us to understand and to really grab a hold of the concept that this new man or this transformation into a new man is complete and is instant at the very moment that Jesus Christ comes into our lives as Lord and Savior. It is not a process that starts little by little and that you will you know, continue to be a little bit more and a little bit more new. It's instant and it's complete in that moment. In that instant, you receive eternal life. In that instant, the old self is left behind. In that instant, the person is freed from the authority of Satan, is freed from the authority of sin. And in that instant, we are changed from death and darkness into the kingdom of God. It is in that instant. It's complete. It's done. Um, God does not work with our old self and patches us up, you know, takes our old nature and just takes the best bits and, and tries to work with that. He, in that instant, makes, makes us completely new men and women in one instant and it is the work the work of the Holy Spirit in us that gives us that new life uh, to gives us that new um, yeah new birth uh, because Adam's sin at the beginning produced that sinful nature we have spoken about in humanity and that sinful nature makes us obey the impulses of Satan and the effect of the new birth is that 
this nature of sin can be completely discarded and be completely replaced by a new nature. Jesus destroyed the old nature on the cross. cross. Romans 6, 6 says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. So, uh, because of what Jesus did, and when we come to believe in him and accept that sacrifice for our for our lives, then we are freed from that um, power and that life of sin and death. So, what does all this mean for us? What why why is it so important to understand this new birth? What what does what effect does it have on us? I mean, we know that we now have eternal life, and we now know that uh, that we're free from sin. But what does that mean? First of all. Uh, it, well, mainly it, it is that it gives us a new identity and it gives us a new position in Christ. Number one, it gives us a position or an identity of children of God. We are now the, the, the sons and daughters of God. John 1 says, Yet to all who did receive him, to all... Let me start again. Yet to all who re- received him, to all... Those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, but born of God. So we're we're new, and that's great news. We have a new, fresh start. We have a second chance. But it is a second chance as children of God. I'm now a daughter of God and now I'm part of his family, I'm part of his kingdom, I get to represent him and I get to obey him and I get to be under him and honor him but it also gives me the opportunity to receive the rights and blessings of a child uh, because I'm now part of his family and and I've, I've got his name. So I have that those rights and those blessings of a child as before I didn't. As a child of God, as a daughter of God, I also receive a position of authority because of that name. Not because of me or because of how good I am, because of him. Um, uh, It gives me a position of authority over the devil, over Satan. It gives me a position of authority over sin. Before, remember when we read Romans 6, it said that we were slaves to sin. So we were under the dominion of sin but now we are over sin we have authority over it and we can overcome the devil in prayer and we can defeat temptations and we can overcome because we are in him it also means that um i i am changed i'm not i have a new personality if you if you if you will i'm no longer a sinner i'm not known as a sinner i'm now a saint i don't I no longer have to obey my and please my senses and please that old nature. I now can obey and please God. Um, so what happens? What are what are the um, the effects or what what can I see tangibly in my life as in this new life in this after this new birth? Well, first of all, that I have a relationship with God. Now, if I am his child, I have a a direct access. I have a relationship with him. I can have conversations with him. I can have communication with him because because he's my father and I'm his daughter. And so I can come to him and and prayer uh, becomes a a very important part. Uh, Not because I have to pray, not because I have to... Uh, get points but because I have this relationship with him this communication reading my bible becomes uh, something more than just a chore or something or a list of requirements uh, or religious requirements it becomes part of what he has written for him for me part of what he his will for me the things that he has his promises the the richness the inheritance I have in him so so communication and prayer and, and reading my Bible and worship him, worshiping God get goes to another level. It has another meaning because he, we have we have a relationship. Uh, secondly, my life changes. 
my outward life changes. I now am able to live a life of integrity, a life of holiness, a life based on values, because I have the help of the Holy Spirit, because I have the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Word of God. I have Jesus' example, and I have all these um, tools, uh, you know, that um, help me achieve this outward change, this life of integrity, this life of holiness. I can also see, or I should also see a change in the way I talk, in, the, in my language. I can stop uh, expressing and declaring the lies and the curses that Satan has taught me, you know, uh, things that are not true about myself, that I've learned, that, that I've picked up along the way and that the devil has been really happy for me to believe. I can now declare the truths and the promises that God wants for me, that the God has for me and that wants to teach me his new language, his new way of, of speaking. And I'm not talking about a religious uh, lingo and, 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 and all these things, but the truths and his word, not the lies I have pick up, picked up along the way in my life. I can now declare with faith the will of God because I can now know and be certain that God's good will for me is for me because of what the Bible says. Um, I can now declare blessings, right? So my, my way of talking, my, my language changes. Um, I can also be part now of a community. I can, I can be part of church, church life and be active in my church life uh, because I, can, I come into this family and this community of believers, of people that have gone through the same and have also been born again and, and now are, uh, are walking side by side in this process of, of, of this outward change, of this uh, renewing of our mind, uh, of this um, uh, catching up, this outward man catching up to our new spiritual self. Um, and also I can tell others, I can share, I can, however you want to call it, evangelize, share with others what has happened to you, what God has done for you, the good news, that which you have experienced. And there's nothing better than to share, not, not just dead words or religion or uh, this speech, but just share our experience what we have lived with God, what we have gone through with God and share with others. And it's really hard not to share because when you have experienced something good, when you have tasted and seen the goodness of, of the Lord and you have tasted and seen, seen his, his life in you and that transformation in you, you can't keep quiet. You have to share with others and you can tell others what has happened to you and what you have lived and what you have experienced, what God has done in you, in your, in your life. Um, and all these things, this relationship with God, this life of integrity and holiness, this change in my, the way I speak and my language, this being part of a community, and being part of church, this being able to share with others are, are, are all bringing blessing to me at the end of the, of, of, of the day because my personal life is going to change. Think about it. If, if we start walking in integrity and if we start walking in holiness, there, there has got to be changes. Uh, they might not be immediate and you might not see the effects immediately, but my personal life will start to change and we will start reaping the benefits and the fruits from that. And as a knock-on effect, my family life is going to change uh, because those around me are going to see the change in me. Even my professional life will change uh, because uh, I, I am not an island and I can I touch others and and it has effect on, on how I relate to others and how others see me. Um, and obviously my spiritual life changes. I was dead, now I am alive. And now I can make this new man grow and, and grow and grow in, in the Lord. So it is so important for us to make a commitment to, to God to, after having this new birth, to live this new life. Because we're now a new creation in Jesus Christ. We're a new creature in Jesus Christ. Um, we're a new person and a new person is no longer going to do the same things that our old nature did. So 
it's just a natural change and a natural uh, progression of, of, of our lives. So um, this is the, the, the lesson of the new birth. I hope that uh, a lot of questions were answered. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please don't hesitate in sending us uh, an email or a message on, on our social networks and uh, we'll be happy to answer them or to discuss it on our Tuesday nights or even during church. It's so important that if you have any questions, just write, that, write them down so you don't forget them and we can have a little chat about them. Uh, have a good week, be blessed and see you next week.